Your child does not have a brain tumor. It's clearly epilepsy. Migraine. What are on the brain? Signs of anorexia. Fine facial nerve. Definitely bells. Hormonal changes. It's eye strain. Precocious puberty. She has a squint. It's a viral infection. Fine motor dyspraxia. food intolerance. Developmental delay. Stress of exams. Gastroenteritis. Diabetes. Come back in a week. We was getting told different things every couple of days. It was, it was ups and then downs and ups again and... I was at my wit's end. She'd seen four doctors and an optician and nobody would listen. I must have paid about, no, ten visits to the GP. I'll always say to GPs and doctors, what would you do if it was your, your son, your daughter? We had no yardstick. Harry was our first born. We had nothing to compare it to. Of course, a brain tumour won't show on a blood test, but other cancers do. So because that came through clear, I was shown the door and told that I just had a child who enjoyed his sleep. Then the paediatrician diagnosed fine motor dyspraxia. All I can really remember is going and seeing my GP every week or so. It was a, literally a trip one every single week, and my mum kept on going back saying to him, this, this isn't right. Then Harry was misdiagnosed with hydrocephalus, water on the brain. At the age of seven, I was diagnosed with a brain tumour. It took two years to diagnose me. The worst time is when you get the diagnosis, because you have no idea what lies ahead. The three operations in themselves um, seen immense, but the radiotherapy was six weeks every day. Large doses of radiotherapy direct to a brain. This is the mask. I hate that mask, but I can't get rid of it because it's Hannah's face. Hopefully it stops tumour growing, but in Hannah's case it didn't. Before Hannah got <laughs> ill, she used to be a big system to me. She used to just enjoy doing loads of activities and sports and then everything just changed. There's a kid with a brain tumour who can't even sit on a swing properly. The neurosurgeon went back in and scraped tumour off one of the central arteries in her brain, but we knew there was a high risk of her having a stroke during that operation, and, and she did. She knew how bad it was, but she said, you've got time with me. The consequences of the two weeks delay was that by the time we'd got to London, Molly's cancer was terminal. I don't think I ever did deal with it really. She said, Mummy, am I being beautiful and brave? And I said, yes, of course you are. They didn't re like realise what she had. They said that she didn't have a brain tumour and then just let her go. I'm a grizzled old soldier, That, but nothing prepares you for this, nothing at all. You're vulnerable in that you cannot help your child. You can't protect them from this at all. Harry is deaf in his left ear. The chemotherapy lowered his resistance to infection so much he had nothing in him. An earlier diagnosis would have prevented that consequence because he may not have needed the chemotherapy. Lucky. I was one of the ones that late diagnosed, but I was one of the ones that survived the day we lost Molly was the day we lost our son. He lost part of himself when we lost Molly. And we said she needs to go to heaven now, so we need to let her go. And then that's when we all went into a room and he held her hand while she passed away. We've gone through things with our daughter that I don't think any parent should ever have to experience. Maybe if Hannah had been diagnosed earlier, you, you can't help thinking maybe it would have been benign. Hannah talks to me quite a lot about the possibility that she will die. Her and a friend, Christy, who sadly passed away last year, they made a joke of what songs they were going to have at their funerals. And Hannah said that she wanted Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. <laughs> Brain tumours are not rare. There's something about it being hidden in a skull that seems to keep it hidden from the public's eye but also professionals. We are under no illusions that it could come back at any time. The nearest we get to the why is the Samantha Dixon Breen 
Tumor Trust. They're trying to find out why, why children get them, and hopefully one day the, the diagnosis will be much, much sooner. We were told not to expect her to be academic, that she wouldn't achieve her A-levels, and we're so thrilled that she got an A-star. I can really do what a normal child could do. That, that's what really all I want, is to do what someone normal could do. Ibby has made us feel like we can put one foot in front of the other. She hasn't mended our broken hearts because they never will be mended and nobody can, but she has helped us live a day. Losing seven centimetres of brain, having radiotherapy, chemotherapy and the consequences of that, but she's starting to do things that normal teenagers should do, going to university, and I'm absolutely thrilled to bits for her. Thank you.